Hi, I'm Mark Drew, and in this video, I wanted to show you how you can do a point of interest that you, your player character can look at in Unreal. So, for example, if you had descriptions on chairs or on on objects in your scene, you want them to appear in the UI widgets. So, this tutorial is going to walk you through that process and how you can tie all this stuff together. Okay, let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my folder. If you don't have one, you can create one. I have a blueprint folder where I put most of my stuff. Um, I'm also, whilst I'm creating folders, I'm going to create a new folder called UI, which is where I'm going to place our first player UI uh, widget. Now what I try and do is use a target because this is a target point, which is quite nice. Uh, because it tells me where things are. So yeah, I guess you could add your own sprite. This is how I'm gonna do my own sprite. So what I can do is now create that and convert the selected actor to blueprint. So we're gonna put in our blueprints folder, which I created earlier, and I'm gonna call this a uh, point of interest. Let's take that away in point of interest blueprint. So this blueprint is all we need to have in there is actually a, a box collision. So this is what our line trace from the player is going to hit. So if we now add a component called a box collision, so here's our box. So like this is what we're going to our line trace is going to hit. Now what we need to do is change the collision presets to custom, and it's query only. In other words, it's only going to be that. So what you can do is block uh, visibility and camera. We'll try these, but all of these you can ignore because what you don't want to do is actually be bumping into it. It's going to be like this, this just box in, in, in the sky. The last thing that we want to do is add some text to it, which is a text that we're going to be displaying in our UI. So let's go and create that variable. Uh, and our variable is going to be called description. Great. So now we have this description, but we want to change it from Boolean, which is useless, to a text uh, variable and make it instance editable. So you know you could this you could do it over here as well, which it makes a little eye for it. Great. So now that we have that, we can place a few of them. So this one, let's say we're going to create this as a table, and what you can do is actually edit the box collision directly. So now we can just uh, edit it like we had any other objects so make it surround our table because that's what we want to hit uh, that's going to be that big um, bring it just above the table is it above the table Ooh, flying too quickly there we go is it above that's enough so uh, then let's um, select the point of interest add another point of interest to our chair oh well let's put the sofa first shall we let's do that let's do the sofa um, you get the idea so now what we can do is go and edit the box, collision, it's, um, let's change the width, there we go, just to, just to surround our sofa. So whenever we move around, let's select that, move that one up. So uh, the point of interest, there we go, let's move this up a little bit. And so move it across. Okay, so now we've got the, the table and that, and now let's uh, create one for the chairs. Um, let's change the size of the box collision. Well, let's rotate this, sorry for the extreme camera angles, but let's change that there. Um, and let's change the size of the box to be about that big, about that big about that big so now we're surrounding the chair nicely that should do and now we can also copy that one over here okay spin that round brilliant now what we can do is add the descriptions so just select this one and you can see you got the description here and we've got the table go and select this one and go sofa select this one over here and call that armchair and we're going to select this one. Uh, that's an armchair. Let's select. Where's the point of interest? Is this a point of interest? 
Why can't I select you? Are you just inside the chair? I think that might have been just a box collision. I made a mistake by copying a box collision. So what we're going to do is actually copy the this point of interest over here. Oops. Oh, I see. This is a box from the box collision I moved by mistake. So let's uh, let's choose this box collision. Here's a box. Uh, move it back to this chair. Basically, you shouldn't move it. You should move the the main one. So there we go. Move that on there. And now duplicate this point of interest and we can now rotate it. So now we have two armchairs. Brilliant. Great. So now we've got all of that. Next we're going to have to do a line trace from our player to the objects, to the box. So we have a collision and be able to get that information. So let's go and find our first person character. We're going to do most of the work. So here's our first person character. Oh, not displaying. So here's our first person character. First off, we're going to do an event tick. So let's do our event tick, add an event tick. If you have one already, you can just attach it to that. So now we have our event tick. And what we're going to do is put a delay because we don't want it to do an every tick. So we can put a delay uh, of that 0.25. Five times a second is more than enough uh, to do this. So the next point is we're going to do a line trace by channel. Line trace by channel. Great. So we've got a line trace by channel. But where we're going to do, where we start our line trace is going to be kind of like from the camera. In other words, our face. So we get from the camera, get world location of that camera. In other words, where it is in 3D space. And that's going to be our start. Getting our end is a little bit. Uh, the end of this this trace is a little bit difficult. So what we're going to do is get, get the forward vector, uh, get forward vector. In other words, which direction we're looking, and how far we're looking for. So we're going to just do a multiply that by a float of about fifteen hundred, which would be like fifteen meters or so. Fifteen hundred, great. And now we're just going to add that to our original position so we can move excuse the police uh, they seem to be in a hurry because it's raining here so I've got all the audio effects so we put that to the end great so now we're doing a line trace let's see if this is uh, working and working fine so now we have our line trace right from the beginning and you can see where it starts and where it ends so that's uh, lovely it, it goes quite a distance you can see the distance that it goes at pretty handy it didn't hit anything, but there you go. So the next thing, we're just going to check whether we've hit something. So let's do a branch. So if we've hit something, stuff will happen. Generally hitting any something, but... Uh, and this one, we can break this out hit using a break hit result. Or we can just break it up here. So I usually like split it out here because there's no point in having yet another node. And what we're going to try and do is convert this actor to see if it's the actor that we wanted, the point of interest. So let's see if we can cast it. So cast to, I cast, cast to point of interest BP. So if we can cast it to this, then we're interested in it. Um, oh, we have this variable, let's delete that first. So what we can do is promote to local, if it, if it, works we can promote it to variable so if it's if it works we can promote it to this variable um, and we can now print out whether we did it so we've hit it so let's say we we've printed it let's print the string and now as that point of interest let's see if we can get the description get description and we're going to just print that out this is just for our debug now what's going to happen if that if it doesn't cast, in other words, we haven't hit a point of interest. What we should do is actually not set a new variable. Let's say this is, uh, let's change the name of this to current point of interest. Great. So if we hit something that we can't cast to it, in other words, it's not one of those, we can set that or basically set it as null. Oops. So if it cast fail, 
set that now I'm just going to cross the streams and just put it here so we can see it's setting it on un setting it um, brilliant so let's see how this is working so let's play let's, let's go over here so sofa table sofa you know it's setting it all the time now this is fine but I don't like this at the program programmer in me doesn't like the fact that it's always setting as a sofa because that's the last bit so you, any animations would be restarting or anything like that would always be updating it so let's see if we can fix that so what we can do is actually go and get our current point of interest uh, and if we've cast it we can check whether these two are equal to each other so do I already have one so is it uh, is it not equal to that so this is any time when we want to do that. So if I have a, a new item, let's get, let's move this up just over here. So if they're not equal, then we can set it. So let's put that branch there. Uh, move this along a little bit. Come on, guys, shuffle along. Move along. Nothing to see here. And we set it. Right, so now if they're not equal, we set it, and there we go, we're done. So now, hopefully, this will only happen, we'll only set it once. So we're going to have a look at it. It says table, armchair, and armchair, sofa, armchair, and if I look away and I come back, it's going to show it. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to add the widget, but let's uh, do a quick cleanup. So we should always mark what this is. So this is, um, uh, let's say we're gonna call this R. You can create a comment by pressing C. Uh, point of interest, interest code. Right, okay, so this is our point of interest code. Next thing, we want to do is create our widget. So this is uh, the going to be the UI that we have in our first person character. So if we now go to UI, we now create a new user interface. Now we do a, a widget blueprint. So let's call this player underscore UI. Great. So let's open that up. So we have our player UI. I want to put some text, like if it's kind of like a, a, a subtitle. So if we go on the common text, I'm going to just plonk that there. You can make UIs much prettier than me. I'm just going to move this to the middle so that's where it centers it to. Let's move that along a little bit. Um, actually, let's, we're going to make this quite big uh, so that, that whatever can appear there. And you notice that it's aligned left. You can put the justification to there. Save, compile it. Now, now that we're in here, this text actually can come from the player. So what we can do is actually go to bind this. We're going to create a binding and it appears here. It says tech zero. So let's say, uh, let's call this get um, point of interest text. Okay, so let's get the, get the point of interest text. Brilliant. So now what we can do is get the player character, get player character because he actually has the 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 point of interest thing but before we can do that we have to cast him to the first person character that we have in our project so we do cast to first person character great so like we now break this connection and we have him as a first person character uh, and as first person character we're going to try and get our point of interest point of get current point of interest so now that we have our current point of interest, we can see if it's valid because it might be null. So we ask is valid and then we do a Boolean um, check, a branching check. So if it's valid, we now can return that. So we can say it's true. We're returning nothing, but we can do the get the description. So we now have the description coming out. It goes there. Now we can copy this node because if it's not valid, in other words, it's null or something like that, we can just return nothing and then you'd have nothing on screen, which is what we want. Now, if we play that, nothing's gonna happen. So if you play it, you don't have the UI. So what we're gonna do is quickly save this and in our first person character, you can find the event begin play. 
Now, if we see the event begin play, does some other branching condition. So we can do something else. We can put a sequence here because there's a whole bunch of stuff about uh, motion controllers and stuff like that that come pre-built. But I'm going to let it do that when the event begins play. So let's do that. And after it's done that, uh, let's make ourselves some space for ourselves. So let's select all of this, move it up a little bit. Right, so now we've got all of that. What we can do is create a player UI widget. So we're going to do and create widget. Cre if I could spell, create widget. And it's going to ask us which type of widget we want. So we're going to go player UI. Great. Now this is still not going to work because we need to add that to the viewport. So add to viewport. And what are we going to add to the viewport? Well, whatever the object that comes back. So now if we compile that, that should all work. So now there's nothing there. So that's good. And there we go. We have an armchair subtitle. It goes look at the sofa and the table and the armchair. And there we're done. This is my first Unreal Engine video, so I appreciate any feedback you might have. So put your comments down below. Remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel.